Welcome back, everybody. This is Derek Kirby with the Dallas Prospect, and today we are reflecting on a busy start to NBA free agency here. Free agency opened up at 5 o'clock Central Time yesterday, and uh, we knew going in, the Dallas Mavericks had some ideas in mind. They wanted to be really aggressive on the Kyle Lowry front. Now, Lowry is about to be 36 years old, but he is still a very competent player who just before this past year, was an all-star caliber talent. We know how good he is in terms of a steady hand defensively, the veteran presence, and big shot-making ability he presents. He would have been a good fit on this team. I say would have been because Dallas gets edged out in the deal. The Heat initially pick up Goran Dragic's player option for, I think, $18 million, and then Toronto and Miami execute a sign-in trade that sends Lowry to Miami in exchange for Drogic. And I think ultimately Toronto is still going to move Drogic. They're not going to just buy him out and move on. You're going to have to trade to get him. And Dallas is interested. So Dallas could either climb into that deal somehow and make it a three-team deal, or Dallas might have to do something separate. And we'll get into that here shortly. But Dallas misses out on Lowry. DeMar DeRozan is still floating out there, and I do think he is a player worth considering. But, you know, it's like, if he was willing to say, I'll go to the Lakers, and this was what was said before yesterday, so the situation has changed a bit. If he was willing to say, I'll go to the Lakers, so, you know, it doesn't matter what money I'm taking. I'll take way less to go to the Lakers to try and win a championship. Again, remember, he was traded for Kawhi Leonard, who then won that title with the Raptors. He does not have a championship. He's younger than Lowry. He's 32 years old, and he is a competent player in the mid-range. Still a guy that can give you big, big uh, opportunities there, can create a little bit, and uh, I think he's a better defender than he, we've seen at times. But even still, it's another guy worth considering. I don't know what the price tag would be for him because obviously I don't think he's going to give that same discount to anybody that he was willing to give to the Lakers. And then you actually have to have him pick you. So we'll see what happens there. But other moves pan out. Rashawn Holmes does ultimately sign, I think, a four-year, $55 million contract to stay with Sacramento. Norman Powell signs to stay with Portland. And that one was surprising to me. That was actually a dark horse I was interested in. And I think he's making like $14 million a year. That's not a lot of money. I mean, consider this. We paid Dwight Powell $11 million a year. That is such an upgrade. It's not even funny. So with this being the case, the Mavericks, we were told their priorities, even though for a brief minute there, Hardaway fell out of the rotation in terms of what we deemed a priority ahead of the actual start of free agency. Tim Hardaway Jr. is re-signed by the Dallas Mavericks on a four-year $74 million contract. It's a uh, it's 18 per. And I actually think that's a very good value contract here. One, because Hardaway, the last two seasons, has shot above 39% for Dallas. He is the first Maverick, and second ever, but first Maverick since George McLeod to knock down 200 threes in a season, back-to-back -back seasons with the Mavericks. So that is worth noting. Dallas wanted to shore up it's three-point shooting, and it wanted to kind of continue on the philosophy of last summer, which was to say, we need three and D guys. We need guys who can shoot threes and guys who can translate in that regard. Now, one move the Mavericks made that frustrated the hell out of me was the decision to not offer a qualifying offer to Tyler Bay. You drafted him in the second round last year. He's an intriguing young talent. Now, is that to say that I think he's going to be a, dif a difference maker on this team or he could have been in the future? No, I don't, I don't necessarily know. But it is frustrating that you look at this and you say, hey man, what are shooters getting paid on the market? Duncan Robinson just got like $90 million from Miami. Doug McDermott got $42 million on his deal. Like, shooters are getting paid, even if that's a one-trick pony. Remember the contract Dallas signed Seth Curry to a couple seasons ago? Yeah, yeah. You'd still have him at like, oh man, what was it? Was it like $8 million a year? Good grief. How nice would that look? Oh, but it's fine. What'd you, what'd you get for him? Ah, Josh Richardson. Yes, yes. 
we traded him to Boston in what was a salary dump, but we brought back the lowest end asset possible, that being admittedly an intriguing prospect. By the way, a prospect I am writing a profile piece or an introductory piece of sorts on for the smoking Cuban, Moses Brown. Intriguing young prospect, flashed big for OKC last year when he got to start. We'll talk about that another time. Okay, Richardson, gone. All right, he, he didn't work out in Dallas, but whatever, consummate professional. What else? Oh, Tyler Bay. Oh, well, he's gone. Mm. Now, Dallas did pick up a trade exception in that deal, and that did then translate in free agency yesterday in the form of two signings. Now, he gave them the flexibility to do it, but the full exception in this case went for Reggie Bullock. He was with the Knicks. It's a guy that shot above 40% last year on more than six attempts per game. That is an underrated signing. He is six foot seven, six foot eight, I want to say. He is a three and D weapon, some ruggedness to his game as well. He's played with the Knicks and with the Pistons. So you haven't really seen him a whole lot. He's been in the Eastern Conference, but it is an intriguing talent acquisition for sure. And he's a three year deal on uh, approximately $30 million that you get there. You also sign Sterling Brown, who with the Rockets last year shot 42% from three. Again, another good defender, a guy who can catch and shoot, knock down threes very competently, and uh, can give you some energy in that regard. I like it. I don't love it, but I like it. it it's, a, it's a move that is intriguing in the potential. Now, it was pointed out, he's last year was a little bit of a, a surge in his three-point shooting in terms of its proficiency. So does he regress a little bit? Or you know, was that the outlier? Or playing alongside Luka Doncic and getting better looks? We've seen how that's translated to guys like Tim Hardaway Jr., for instance, a guy who was a career 34 35% three-point shooter. And now the last two seasons with Dallas has been, I think, 38 39 40% thereabouts in that stretch the entire time. That's the benefit of playing with Luca. the kind of looks you generate, whether it's his gravity, whether it's his vision, passing, accuracy, whatever, that's what you get. So could Sterling presumably maintain that level? I think so. Now, I haven't seen the, the dollars and cents on his deal. I want to say, you know what? I think I did. I think it was a two-year deal for him worth $6 million. And if that's the case, that's, that's a nice, cheap option. Yeah. That's a cheap option for, for three-point shooting. So with these three moves, none of them sexy or flashy. Tim Hardaway Jr., bring him back, $18 million a year. Luca immediately, Luca hasn't said jack. I, I, I reeled myself in before I could curse. Luka Doncic has not said jack about uh, Jason Kidd or Nico Harrison or any of these guys Dallas has made these moves with, but he did via the, bruh, the breaking news of modern day. He voiced his approval for Hardaway's extension by liking Hardaway's Instagram post uh, in which he basically was celebrating returning to Dallas. So there you go. Luca apparently approves of that. And then on top of that, you add another, uh, two more guys who then shot even better than Hardaway last year from three, being north of 40%. I think it was like 42 and 43% respectively. So intriguing and Bullock in particular intrigues me in the fact that he attempted six per game on average and still shot that percentage that is pretty significant I think that's a, a very valuable addition now is it a flashy addition no but it's one that kind of to me follows in the trend of what you wanted to do last year but you have a little bit more cap flexibility to do stuff this year now this has been touted as the most crucial off season, and I've touted this too. This, this has largely been not just me, but I've been certainly among the people saying this is the most crucial off season in Dallas Mavericks history. And for them to walk out of this, out of the opening day of free agency, with good, not great, certainly not flashy pickups in the last year, like Luka Doncic will sign his contract extension this summer. There is some question and debate: Is he going to go? Because he can get the same exact deal Trey Young just signed, a five year. $207 million contract. Luca has said, it's been said by, I think, Mark Stein, that that is the intention for Luca to sign his new deal with the Mavericks, but he wanted to wait until after the Olympics, which, fair enough. That being the case, 
if uh, if Luca takes the five year, two hundred and seven million dollar contract, awesome. But there's also consideration for a three year deal. Now let me explain that. It's not just that he's then twenty five years old and a chance to reevaluate. It's that a new TV deal kicks in in three years. Why is that important? That means the salary cap goes up. Meaning, and not only that, he will be eligible at that point for the Supermax. Because of his years of service in the NBA, you then at that point qualify for the Supermax. So, he could cash in 25 years old, basically just entering his physical prime on a Supermax deal in a year in which the cap explodes anyway. And keep in mind, that's a percentage related signing. That's not, hey, the Supermax means you get 200 million or 250 million. By the way, I don't know what it'll end up being. The point is, it's your 20% of the team's cap. That's why it matters that the TV deal is going to open up. He could potentially get a mammoth payday in three years, the likes of which we have never seen. Worth considering in that regard. So, is it possible Luca only signs a three-year deal instead of a five? Yes. Is that necessarily a, oh my God, this is him showing his patience is waning. The bridge is on fire. Quick, grab the water. We're losing him. Maybe. I, I don't want to hit the panic button too hard on that because I feel like that is still a little bit of a reach where we still have to have some things really not go well between now and then. But it is something to consider. It does increase that pressure just a little bit more. If Dallas can find a way to still acquire DeMar DeRozan, I am over the moon because DeMar DeRozan is a very good fit here. Now, Goran Dragic remains in play. I mentioned earlier the possibility of him because of... he's he, And by the way, he's expressing interest and desire to come to Dallas and play here. He doesn't want to be in Toronto. I don't think Toronto ultimately has him in their plans either, but they're not going to give him up for nothing. A possible move that I've heard discussed is, and you got to think about this in terms of cap. Again, Dragic is making $18 million on his player option this year. That's a, that's a little bit of a high price tag, but he is 36 years old as well. That's another thing you got to consider. Granted, two years ago, he did play a major role on leading the Heat to the finals. But if you take Dwight Powell's $11 million contract... And Jalen Brunson. I like Brunson, but you got to give to get, as uh, Norm Hitzkiss of The Ticket put it. If you make a deal like that, you could potentially get Dragic here. Dragic has said he wants to play in Dallas. He wants to end his career playing with Luka. Luka loves Dragic. Consider this, too. There is, with all great athletes, really all people, there is a facet of ego. As great as Luka is, we know when, when the Mavericks chose not to bring back J.J. Barea last year, even though he really wasn't going to be playing or contributing in that capacity, we know that guys like Tim McMahon with ESPN, who have been around the team as close as anybody for years, said that's probably a mistake because Luka listens to J.J. Barea. He respects J.J. Barea. And he was clashing with Carlisle at times, Luca was. Not just the outburst we would see occasionally on the, on the court, but there was tension there. Not having Berea, not having that kind of veteran leader who could talk to him was a loss last year. Not having that was a, a disadvantage. That's part of why Dallas has tried to get Berea to consider joining Kidd's coaching staff. And I think in that regard, obviously Dragic and Luca's history playing in Slovenia and all of that, and Dragic was really the first one uh, that I know of that was saying, and I think this was back in like 2017, that Luka was going to take the NBA by storm and still be one of, if not the best player in the world. Like, he believed in him that much even back then. And I think adding him, not only does it make Luka happy because it's a friend who he has great respect for, it's a viable guy that can also orchestrate some offense, play big minutes for them. Not, not big minutes in terms of high minutes. Like I mean, like, valuable minutes. Dragic is, like I said, there's mileage on the, on the car at this point. But 
it's still an intriguing option. And it, honestly, this is my opinion. If you're going to get Dragic, and Dallas has been flirting with the idea for a while now since that initial Miami trade fell through, you need to do it now. Because I feel like you're getting to a territory where there's going to be a drop-off. He's 36. He's played a lot in the NBA, played a lot internationally. You need to do it now rather than try and wait one more year because at some point you're going to hit a wall. Right now, there's a premium on veteran guards in the NBA, not just because of what Chris Paul just did with Phoenix, but the deal for Lowry going for like basically $30 million a year to Miami as part of this sign-in trade on a three-year deal. Like, you have high value. Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, another guy I was interested in, he's going to Washington, but he's getting good money. He's a guy with two ACL tears in his past. Like, that's, that's a lot to consider. You have just these guys who, because of this notion of like, hey, man, just think in terms of short-term window. Don't worry about like an outward projection of four or five years, whatever. Think just short-term window. Would adding this gritty, experienced, quality veteran point guard or off guard, whatever, help this young group of guys get over the top? For Phoenix, it damn near did. Now, granted, Phoenix had to have some things kind of break in their favor with regard to other injuries in the conference and all of that. But still, and by the way, Phoenix just paid an obscene amount of money to Chris Paul. Chris Paul is going to be 40 years old by the time he finishes this Phoenix contract. $120 million total contract. That's who, who I thought he was getting paid a lot before. I can't believe how much Phoenix gave him. I think that's an emotional decision that's going to bite them. Because the odds of running it back and doing what he damn near did this year, not good. Not not when you're already 36, but that's a different discussion. Point being, the market is high right now. It's hot for these guys to come in and get big money. And how much of that is Paul, the exception, proving to be an exception? Or is it the rule? Like if Lowry and the Heat now go on a run and go to the finals or win a title or something next year, are we saying like, oh, pff, see, that proves it right there. Back-to-back -back years where that was uh, that was what spearheaded it for a team. I don't know. But I think you don't want to get to age 37 Dragic before you try and bring him in here to Dallas. So I go for that reason for DeRozan. I, I know it's not a point guard, point guard discussion in that case, but Luke is your point guard anyway. Uh, you get another guy that, not only is he 32 years old, but he can still do a lot of what you need, and uh, I think that helps as well. So yes, a lot of things going on with the Mavericks. Tell me what you think. Is this is this a new front office, but more of the same? Is Dallas's yet another miss on a premium free agent, an indictment on the franchise's ability, regardless of what superstar they have here, be it Dirk or Luka? you know, their ability to bring in big names. Like, we're not even talking premium names. All told, this is not the strongest free agency class. Kawhi Leonard was never going to leave the Clippers. Chris Paul obviously wasn't going to leave the Suns, even though both opted out and that drew some attention. Neither of them were ever going to leave their teams. So really, your free agent class this year was not super strong, and even then, you could not convince someone to come to Dallas. Is it an indictment on the front office, even though it's a new front office? Or is this a matter of plan powder in action once again, making savvy moves? By the way, I mentioned the possibility of that Luca three-year deal instead of five, so he qualifies for a Supermax on the new TV deal and the cap explosion. Yeah, yeah, keep in mind uh, some of the contract links here, what they're setting up for, such as Bullock, three-year deal. Brown, two-year deal. They seem to be angling for flexibility in three years' time. Now, that was kind of the way they operated before, but still worth considering. So let me know. Savvy, savvy moves, plan powder, or is this more of the same from yet another disappointing haul, even though I still think there's another move or two coming, be it Dragic, DeRozan, whatever. Let me know in the comments. If not, I don't know, do whatever you want to do with your day. Leave a, leave a like. Drop a comment, subscribe. I don't know. You've been here a while, right? If you're still listening to me after 20 minutes, you should have already done these things. 
In fact, I'm judging you actively right now for having not done these things. How dare you? How dare all of you? And remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!